Hey everyone, thanks for joining us once again. I appreciate you tuning in to our channel. Jan and I were una unable to get our video out last week because we were traveling and went out to Arizona for a memorial service. So appreciate everybody being patient and tuning in again. So just stay tuned and we'll bring you our next video. Thanks. praying about what we wanted to share this week and I felt like the Lord wanted me to share some of my testimony and what's gone on in my life and some defining moments and that was kind of the title that I got and I put on the video some defining moments in my life so my background is I grew up in a Christian home very conservative um, we all attended a conservative church, and um, I decided at six years old that I wanted to get saved, so I went to my mom and I said, I want to get saved, and we went to the pastor, and so he explained it to me as best I could understand at six years old, and then we had a uh, baptism ceremony that Sunday. And so that was my first recollection of really giving my heart to the Lord and wanting to uh, follow Him. And so kind of fast forward uh, up into my teens and came into junior high, junior high school, Sunday school church. And at our church, uh, which was very conservative, there was a, a gentleman that came in and volunteered to start teaching the junior high school kids. Did a fabulous job. He and his wife were just really loving, and I really appreciated them. And there was something about this guy that I just couldn't figure out what it was, but he had something that I didn't. And I didn't see in, frankly, any other people that I knew. This guy was just so full of joy, and he was just happy. And he had just a life about him. The power of the Lord was in him. And that just impressed me. And I'm like, what do you have? What is different about you? We would go to his house. They would have these big gatherings for the, the junior and high school kids. And we'd, have, we'd play games and sing songs. And it was just a lot of fun. And then he would pray for the kids. And he would lay hands on them and pray for them very respectfully, teaching us about the Lord and there was just something about him that I couldn't quite figure out what it was, but I knew what he had is what I wanted. And so eventually, it turns out that he was a born-again believer. He was on fire for the Lord, but he was also baptized in the Holy Spirit. And our little conservative church did not agree with that, and so they eventually asked him to leave and to no longer lead the, the children's church, the junior high kids. And so I was really disappointed when he left. Uh, so fast forward uh, two or three years later out of junior high school into high school. And uh, we had another youth group leader, youth group pastor. And I was probably my junior year of high school and the, the youth pastor said, hey, if anybody wants any personal mentoring or you know, questions, I'm here to help out. He was a college student, great guy, appreciated him. So I came to him and said, hey, I wanted to learn about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What is that? Well, he really didn't know because he wasn't baptized in the Holy Spirit. He had no idea, but he was very willing to, he says, well, let's look into it. Let's see what, what this is. So. Uh, we began to do some Bible studies together and search it out, and he just couldn't come up with too many answers. And so I was a little disappointed, a little discouraged, and I knew there was something to this that I didn't know about, I didn't have. So about that same time, uh, my best friend that I met in eighth grade, he attended a charismatic church, a Pentecostal church. I didn't know anything about that, but he invited me to come to church with him one Sunday. And so going to his church was like 
day and night. I mean, for this conservative kid walking in where in church you sit quietly and you fold your hands and you don't talk and it's just very hushed and the pastor does his his sermon we sing a few songs we stand up and leave this church was just alive and people were praying in tongues they were raising hands and to me it was just this culture shock it was like wow what is this but what I saw was there was a genuine love and just a genuine worship for the Lord. And I thought, you know what? That, I think, is what's missing in my life, is that baptism of the Holy Spirit. So they taught a lot on that. They invited people to come and pray and come receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And quite frankly, it's very simple. It is a uh, it's a believing and trusting of the Lord. He provided this gift to us, and it's a matter of receiving it by faith. So in this particular church and denomination, um, they taught that you had to tarry for it, meaning you had to sort of strive and work and wait for it, and when it's God's time to give it to you, He'll give it to you. That's, this is not true. The Lord wants you to have this gift right away, and it's a simple prayer. And so... I had gone forward many times and asked for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, didn't seem to have received it, and wasn't quite sure, as a lot of people, they kind of flounder around, and how do you, how do you get this? How, how is this? So <clears throat> at one point, I knew a, a girl that I had met, and I drove uh, over to New Mexico to see her, visit her and her family. And I'd made that trip a couple times, and it was a long, it was like an eight-hour drive going over there and back. And that was, a, that was quite, a, quite a distance, quite a sacrifice on my part. And I really liked this girl. And so at one point when I went over there, <clears throat> I got there, um, and she told me basically, you know, I want to be friends, but nothing further than that. And so I was really disappointed uh, but she, again, was somebody that had the baptism of the Holy Spirit and just moved in that, just the love and the love for the Lord, the love for others and the worship and just what I saw in her life. Uh, she was just alive with the love of the Lord. And so driving away from there, I had been rejected kind of by this sort of girlfriend. But at the same time, I just began to worship and praise the Lord in my car as I was driving back home. And I mean, I just praised the Lord and was thanking Him for it. And it was just all of a sudden, I just felt this presence on me. And it was like nothing else. I mean, such a peace, such a joy, such a love that came over me. And that whole trip back home, instead of just being this, this miserable, oh, woe is me, you know, look, this girl rejected me. And you know, I could sit here and complain about it. I, drive, I drove this whole way, you know, eight hours to go see her. And then she could have at least told me over the phone. I could have done all of that. But no, instead, the Lord had something different for me. And so he moved on me and because I was open and I received it. And I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I don't remember if it was at that time when I started speaking in tongues or not and praying in tongues, but that came very shortly after. But it was like I plugged my life into a big power socket and it just things became alive to me. And uh, I've heard it described as, um, you know, it's just a power boost in your life as you begin to operate in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that was a huge defining point in my life. And I saw just this fellowship and the worship of the Lord just increased exponentially in my life. So um, fast forward a little bit through my life and Jan uh, and I eventually met and got married. And we were, um, we moved to Phoenix. We were living in Phoenix and going to some really good churches, non-denominational churches down there, spirit-filled, seeing, um, you know, the move of the spirit many times in these services and seeing 
just, just the Lord moving and whatnot. But there was something that I was noticing, and that was as I began to study the Bible, there were things that people would, would say and do that was not consistent with, with what the Word taught. And I knew there were things that just weren't consistent with what does the Word say, and then, wait a minute, these people are teaching something different or taking out of context or, or whatever. So um, I was just hungry for the Lord. I just wanted more, love the Lord, and wanted to serve the Lord. And so <clears throat> one day some friends of ours that we had met down there, uh, the guy had a set of cassette tapes, and this is dating me. It was back when cassette tapes were a real thing, a, a big thing. And he said, hey, you know, I've got these tapes, and I listened to this guy. He's a Bible teacher, and I've had them, and, uh, you know, I thought they were pretty good. I thought you might want to listen to them. So I took the set of tapes. I think there was, I don't know, eight or ten of those. Took them home, put them on the shelf, and forgot about them for several months. So one day I was going to work and I thought, you know, I saw him, I remembered him, and I thought, yeah, maybe I'll listen to those and just see who this guy is. So I took them and plugged them in, and uh, these were a set of camp meeting tapes. And these were tapes by Andrew Womack. So I don't know if you're familiar with Andrew Womack Ministries. Uh, his ministry has grown huge now. Um, awesome ministry. This guy has an amazing revelation on grace and God's love. And so I began to listen to those tapes. And as he began to teach, his whole teaching session through that camp meeting that they had recorded was all about the difference between law and grace. And what is it that the Word teaches? And I never really understood this. No one ever explained this to me. So let me read a couple of scriptures to you because this is kind of the foundation of what he was teaching and what he was explaining. And so in Galatians 2.16, it says, Knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law. And so the church that I've gone to, had gone to for years and years, taught all of, you know, good works, that's fine. But a lot of this was taught in reference to, this is how you please God. This is how you earn the blessings of God. This is how you, in essence, work for your salvation. And it was just a burden of laws and rules and conditions. And you just had to, there was so much guilt and condemnation and, and burden to all of this. So as he began to teach this, um, saying, knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, even we believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith in Christ and not by works of the law, for all flesh will not be justified by works of the law. So that's in Galatians chapter 2. Um, in Galatians chapter 3, it goes on and it says, But before faith came, we were kept under the law. So the law was given by Moses, and he explained that um, the Lord initiated the law to, to help us follow a guideline, but we did not have grace yet. And it says, <clears throat> We were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. So the Lord had a plan to reveal uh, grace later when Christ came. It says, Therefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. And so here I'm hearing this distinction of, of the law. And the law is good. The law is perfect. There's nothing wrong with the law. But I can't live the law. I can't fulfill the law. I can't be good enough to meet all the requirements of the law. And God knew that. And that's why Christ came. That's why Jesus came to be my substitute and to live the perfect life, to fulfill the law for us. He didn't come to do away with it, but He came to fulfill it. And this was the grace that God offered to us. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So this is a, a gift of grace that God has given us for salvation. We receive salvation. We receive everything from God 
through grace and by faith. It is not anything that I earn. I can't be good enough. I can't do good enough. And the Lord loves us. He first loved us and extended that love to us. And because of that, I love him back. And so this was one of those defining moments in my life where I began to read, excuse me, listen to those cassette tapes. And I literally went tape by tape and listened to those and then started over again. And I'm sure I went through those at least six or eight times for every cassette tape. And every time I would listen to it as he was teaching through this, it was just more revelation, more understanding. And my eyes, my spiritual eyes were opening up. I was beginning to understand the gift that God had given us and how good he is, how gracious he is, and that he's not a harsh God. He's not out to try and punish people. He is not out to you know try and catch you doing something wrong. He is such a good and kind and loving, gracious father, and he gave his only begotten son to save me and to save you. And this is the, the God that I wanted to hear about. This, is, this was just revelation to me, and it changed my life. It set me free. Before, in the past, I'd had such guilt and condemnation and shame, and that is what the law brings on you. But grace sets you free, and it sets you free to know the love of Christ and to live in that. So this was another defining moment in my life that was just this aha, and, and I woke up in a sense. Um, fast forward another few years, and there was another moment that I definitely remember in my life. And uh, Jan and I had been listening to a uh, Bible teacher, a pastor um, named Jim Richards, and uh, great, great teacher. We were listening to some uh, tapes of his programs, and I don't know what it was. There was just a phrase that caught my ear. And he said, as he was teaching along, he said the phrase, are you willing to be wrong? And there was just something about that phrase that just caught my attention. And I couldn't forget that. And for about two weeks, I just sort of chewed on that phrase and thought about it. Am I really, am I willing to be wrong? There was something about that. And <clears throat> I had always been the type of person that wanted to have all my doctrine just straight, you know, know every answer, be able to, you know, solve every problem. And so I was trying to get everything just perfectly and in order and in this neat little box and have all of my doctrine just set. And so after I heard that phrase and that question, are you willing to be wrong? I, I had to stop and say, you know, Lord, I have prided myself on trying to figure all this out and have all the answers. But you know what? I don't have all the answers. I'm not God, and I can't figure it all out. So I just, after about two weeks, I said, Lord, that's it. I, I surrender myself to you, and Lord, yes, I'm willing to be wrong about things that I believe. And when I did that, it's I humbled myself before the Lord and said, Lord, I I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong somewhere. Of course, you know, we all are somewhere. And it was just like all of a sudden another eye-opening moment came to me because when I said, Lord, I am willing to be wrong. You show me where I'm wrong. And I want to know. I really want to know the truth. You know, the Word says that the Holy Spirit came to set us free. He came to lead us into all truth, to comfort us. Well, the Holy Spirit was certainly leading me into truth and helping me to understand and see areas where I had been wrong and I had my theology off. And, you know, I don't even, I don't have it perfect now. I'm not trying to get it perfect now. But it was just a revelation of humbling myself before the Lord and saying, Lord, I'm just open to whatever you want and being willing to accept whatever he is teaching me. And there's a witness in my spirit. We've talked about that before, that, that inner witness, that unction, where the Holy Spirit witnesses with my spirit, and we know the truth that's coming to us. So these were just a 
few of the real defining moments in my life where I see advances and steps that I made in my walk with the Lord and in my relationship and how I have grown close to the Lord and discovered how good and how loving and kind He is. And I wanted to share that with you because for some people I know they struggle and they wonder, you know, what's going on? What's my purpose? You know, what's going, what's happening in my life, Lord? And it doesn't seem like you're hearing me or answering me. But I want to tell you the Lord loves you and He wants you to draw near to Him. He is not going to come in and just take over. God is not like that because we have our own free will and we have to invite Him into our lives. But if we will just crack that door open a little bit and give Him that opening and say, Yes, Lord, I invite you in. I, I just I want everything you have. And if it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God wants you to experience that. I don't have time to explain all of that right now that it entails, but it is an awesome, awesome relationship that we have with the Lord that just, it's like, I, it's hard to explain because it just exponentially opens up the revelation, the understanding, the love, the power that we have, and God wants us to live in that abundant life. He has given us that promise that He has uh, come to give us life and more abundantly. So I just hope this is an encouragement to anyone out there that's listening in. And just know that the Lord has so much more for you. If you'll just trust Him and open up and receive what He has for you, you'll be shocked. You'll be amazed at what the Lord will do for you. And be patient because the Lord does not always, He doesn't operate on our time frame, but God is faithful and true to his word so he will fulfill and he will answer prayers he loves you and he wants the best for you and he is wanting to get that to you and what we need to do is to humble ourselves and believe and receive from the lord and there are places that we may have prejudices we may have uh, you know we may have believed lies and the lord wants to break that down in us and help us to understand that the enemy wants to deceive us and lie to us and distract us and get us looking anywhere uh, but at God. So I'm just praying that everyone will receive this message. They'll take a moment and just say, Lord, where can I in my life open up and be more receptive to you, Lord? Whatever you have for me, I want to have that because it is good. God's not trying to take things away from you. He's trying to get good things to you. So... All right, bless you all. I uh, just hope you got something out of this, and this was a, a good testimony. I know God has done amazing things in my life. So thanks for joining in. I appreciate it. As always, uh, if you got something out of this, give, give us a thumbs up in that. Um, I'll put our uh, email address down below, so if you want to contact us. And uh, we're here to answer questions. If there's a topic or anything you'd like us to discuss, uh, just let us know. All right. Thanks. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.